Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video of the Network Models and Protocols section of Topic 2 in Unit 1 paper. Uh, if you need to follow all the videos on the network topics, you can view through the playlist as I have ordered all the network lessons uh, in under that uh, Unit 1 Topic 2 uh, network. So in this third video under networks, we will start learning about network models. Here I will teach you about the OSI model and in the next video I will discuss in detail about the rest of the protocols that is in your syllabus. So starting off, let's see what is the OSI model. The word OSI is an acronym for Open Systems Interconnection. Uh, the OSI model meaning uh, the Open Systems Interconnection model is a conceptual model. Uh, this model is created by the International Organization for Standardization. Uh, it provides a common basis for the coordination of standards development for the purpose of uh, system interconnection. So this conceptual framework describes the functions of a networking system. Uh, it is a reference model and a standard prescribed for all parties dealing with the uh, interconnections to follow. The reference model describes uh, seven layers a computer system uses to communicate over the internet. Uh, the OSI reference model came into existence uh, only in 1983, uh, long after the uh, modern internet came into existence. Therefore, the modern internet is not based on the OSI model. Uh, as I said earlier, the OSI model explains seven layers. Starting from the bottom, there are physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and the application layer on top. Uh, as shown here, the layers are stacked uh, one on uh, top of the other and the numbering is from bottom to top. Uh, we will start learning these layers and their purpose in detail shortly. Uh, before we move any further, you must be wondering what a layer is, right? So in computer communication, layers represent a set of data transfer operations common to all types of data transfers among uh, cooperating uh, networks. Each layer associates one or more protocols within, uh, with the layer. A layer has a specific set of tasks uh, or duties to perform and has uh, safeties to check whether the data reached accurately to the same layer of the receiver or the other side. A layer accepts data from the immediate consecutive layer either above or below the layer only. So there's no jumping, it's just from the immediate consecutive layer. Uh, here I have shown another visualization of how layers would work using how we would send a letter to someone. I hope this example will help you to understand uh, the OSI model uh, clearly. Okay, so uh, say, let's say when we want to send a letter uh, to a relative uh, living far away or in another country, we don't write the letter uh, travel the distance, take that letter and travel the distance and hand deliver, do we? Instead, we use the postal network to send it, right? So if you think of how the letter you write uh, ends up with the intended receiver, you must follow a protocol defined by the, probably the postal service to achieve this. So typically you will write the letter, put it in an envelope, write the receiver's address accurately, and sometimes you will return address to on the envelope and uh, drop it to the correct mailbox. The post office in your town will collect all the letters from the mailbox, take them to the post office and sort them to see what letters are addressed to outside regions or towns. Such letters will be handed uh, over to the career service or transport service. Uh, they will carry your letter to any part of the country and they will use the receiver address you wrote to determine how it must exchange to uh, which career next. After going through the postal exchanges, the letter will arrive at your relative's post office. That post office will check the street uh, and number and hand over the letter to the 
postman that distributes a letter to your relative's street. Uh, the postman will deliver the letter to your relative based on the number written on the envelope. Your relative will pick up the letter from the mailbox, remove it from the envelope and read the letter. Yeah, it's just quite a journey and interesting to think. So this example explains how different layers work and how the duties are segregated among the layers. The duties of the post officers are to either collect the letters from the post boxes in their control or deliver the letters to the correct address. The postal exchange duties to sort the incoming letters and uh, hand them over to the correct career and take the letter to the next collection point. So all these layers will read the different parts of the address to decide where the letter must be routed. So this is exactly the OSI 7 layer model described as well. So, uh, okay, now if you overlay our postal service example earlier to the OSI model, you can see that the sender or the transmitter in our case send the data through seven layers and the physical link will take the data to the receiver's device. For an example, there are two computers uh, communicating. And the receiver's device will again send data through the seven layers con uh, converting the message uh, to a level that the receiver can understand. The transmitter and receiver can be in different countries but the same principles will work. Right. Now, if you, uh, yeah, the OSI models data transmission is based on a PDU. What's that? A PDU or protocol data unit is the unit of data that will be transmitted through the OSI model. Uh, an application file or an, an application data stream is to be broken down into one or more PDUs and needs to be sent over the OSI model. Uh, the structure of the PDU will change when it moves from one layer to the next. Uh, the PDU moves down from the sender. It will keep on growing with new data added by each layer. Uh, on the receiver end, these layers will be stripped and handed over to the layer above at the end the application layer will receive the original PDU that the application layer of the sender handed over to the presentation layer. As you can see in this diagram uh, I, I guess it's better to pause the video and check how the data of the PDU, uh, PDU is in black color and uh, in the sides you can see uh, different uh, color schemes so that you can see uh, how the data of the PDU get changed over the layers in sender side and also in the receiver side. You will learn what this additional data added in the next uh, few minutes. Right. Uh, these seven layers in this OSI model are further categorized into upper and lower layers. The upper layers also called as host layers are from layers five to seven. Uh, that is application, presentation and session. Uh, the lower layers or media layers are layers from 1 to 4. That is physical, data link, network, transport. Uh, the upper layers are mainly responsible for dealing with software applications. Uh, that is shown in green color. And the lower layers in blue color are on the other hand deals with networking and network equipment. Uh, these layers mainly handle uh, data transporting tasks and issues. These layers can be found uh, implemented as both software and hardware since they are tightly integrated into a network equipment in different ways uh, by different providers. So now let's start uh, exploring each layer in detail. Right. First layer is the physical layer. This is at the bottom of the stack and belongs to the lower layers. The physical layer deals with transmitting bits from one computer to another through the computer network. This layer also regulates the transmission of a stream of bits over a physical medium. In other words, it will queue the bits in order and start transmitting them serially or parallelly as per the network's infrastructure supports. 
Uh, physical layer defines what transmission technique is used to send data over the medium. If a cable is attached, it will use cable-based uh, bit streams. And if a Wi-Fi connection is established, it will transmit as the Wi-Fi require bit stream transmitted. This layer also deals with uh, physical issues uh, such as the voltage to use for a 0 and a 1 uh, or the frequency to use for a 0 or 1 and how long it should wait before sending the next bit. Uh, it will also change behavior based on simplex or duplex mode and based on the availability of parallel or serial transmission. Uh, the physical layer deals many different aspects connected to the physical characteristic, uh, data rate, representation of bits and etc. Physical characteristic include the physical transmission medium that is guided or unguided and the interface between devices such as network card and transmission medium. Uh, the representation of bits include how a 0 uh, and a 1 are interpreted as a voltage or a frequency. So data converted to bits get converted to signals either electrical uh, or it could be uh, optical. The physical layer deals with the transmission rate uh, that is the number of bits sent per second. This is determined again based on the transmission medium and the devices that we have connected. Right. Uh, the physical layer also handles how the connection of the device to the medium is defined. Uh, point to point or multi point uh, for examples. Uh, for an example, a ring network or a mesh network has multi point connections as we learned in an earlier video. Similarly, topological structure is also understood by the physical layer uh, when the device is first connected to the network. Transmission mode is considered by the physical layer in deciding how to uh, send the bits. The second layer in the stack is the data link layer. Uh, this layer's primary responsibility is to establish and terminate a connection between two physically connected nodes on a network. You can think of nodes as a computer and a switch or a computer and another computer. So this layer breaks up packets it got from the layer above into frames and sends them from source to destination. Uh, it consists of logical link control to identify the network protocol and to perform error checks as well uh, as synchronization of frames. Remember like uh, when we drop multiple frame into the network, the other end may not receive the frames in the same order. This is due to different network speeds and different frames taking different paths to reach the receiver. Therefore, syncing the frames to import uh, frames is important uh, to see whether the frames are received without errors. The second aspect is media access control. It is used to connect uh, devices and define permissions to transmit and receive data. It prevents a device from accepting a frame that is not intended for that device. So when a frame not addressed to the specific device is received, it will discard the frame. Uh, but if you, uh, if you have heard of network sniffing software, uh, it directly accesses the data link layer and starts extracting all frames this layer receives. It allows one device to listen to all the transmissions in a network, even those intended to others. Basically, hackers use this method to steal others' uh, privacy data. The third layer of the OSI stack is the network layer. The network layer uh, takes care of logical addressing switching mechanism to use, uh, discovering the best route to use and selecting them, establishing the connection to the other device, uh, controlling the confession by speeding or slowing the speed of data given to layer 2 and recording or uh, reordering uh, of the packets received at the receiver's end. Moving on, uh, next up is the transport layer. The transport layer has several implemented protocols. Two of them are TCP and UDP. Uh, at the sender end, the data from the upper layer, the session layer is broken uh, down into segments and transmitted in the transport layer. At the receiver end, it is responsible for reassembling the segments on the receiving end 
turn into data and hand over to the session layer. Its activities include the flow control, sending the data at a rate that matches in the connection speed, error control, checking the accuracy of data and requesting a resend from the sender if the segment is corrupted. Uh, the transport layer is responsible for creating or establishing communication channels called sessions between devices. Uh, you must have heard of this in web applications. Like uh, somebody say, uh, my session got timed out. When you are paying from your credit card, uh, after a certain time, your session get uh, closed likewise. So in web app, uh, the, the transport layer is the layer responsible to make sure the session is established and reused within an active period. Uh, hence, the layer is responsible for opening a session, making sure the session remains open and functional while data is being uh, transferred, and finally closing the session when transcends. It can also set checkpoints and allow recovering and resuming a transfer if a session is interrupted. We are now reaching the top of the layer, and the sixth layer is the presentation layer. The simple job of this layer is preparing the data for the application layer. It takes data from the application layer and prepares it for the transmission over the session layer. Uh, it defines how two devices should encode, encrypt and compress data to receive it correctly on the other end. Finally, we have the application layer at the very top. Uh, the application layer is used by end user software uh, such as web browsers and email clients. Uh, hence, this layer resides inside the application software. It provides protocols that allow the uh, software to send and receive information and present meaningful data to us users. Uh, some protocols used in application layer are HTTP, Hypertext proto Transfer Protocol, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, uh, Post Office Protocol, POP, and uh, DNS Domain Name System. Okay, uh, I have added a summary of what we discussed in this lesson. Basically, you should be able to draw the seven layer OSI model, uh, explain what each layer is responsible and uh, data form in each layer and how data changes in each layer. So go through the summary of OSI model and it will be, uh, I'll be uploading uh, the next lesson that is TCP IP model. So after doing the TCP IP, uh, Let's do a practice question video. So it will help you to understand uh, better and prepare for the exam. So subscribe if you haven't, so you will not miss the new lessons. So until next time, goodbye.